I am Felipe. Dr. House was worried how you left things. He's giving you massage. I have great fingers. How long have you been a masseur? Are you a prostitute? Are you a cop? Get your hands off me. Maybe I should just quit, but I'm not like you guys. I gotta talk to her about this Trenton thing. It'll go bad. A massage from a male hooker? You're trying to sabotage this relationship. Why would I do that? Basically, haven't introduced me to your daughter. I'm not the only one who's holding back. You're going to burn. And I thought I was hallucinating when realizing someone came up with the plot idea that the new teammate was hired because she looks like Chase's mum. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 7 Episode 4 Massage Therapy. On this channel we are reacting to all 177 House videos and this will be episode 136. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Billy? Is anyone here? Hey, I just noticed the front door was open. Maybe you left it that way. <gasps> it's okay. It's okay. It's just me. My stomach! Dr. House, this is Dr. Kelly Benedict, your new fellow. Man, you're hot. She looks like Cameron, and he's hired her solely to sleep with her. Did you ever marry a dying man, and if so, did you freeze his sperm? 30-year-old female, severe vomiting and abdominal pain, preceded by three days of moderate pain. Hepatitis A. Serologies are negative. Appendicitis. It hasn't ruptured by now. Liver angiogram. Let's check for fibrosis. Search the home for heavy metals. You are spending time with the kid. As little as possible. That is one boring child. Chima? Looks more like scar tissue. Look at her rib cage. She broke five or six bones at some point. It's not lead poisoning. Well, she got a credit card receipt for lunch from a cafe in Trenton. I guess it slipped my mind. Breaking eight ribs, that slipped your mind too? During training, I fell off my bike. It was 10 years ago. We're gonna need to see the records from the operation. Got a massage coming by in five. Hi. What was that that Cuddy said before, that she takes house with all? his imperfections, seems like she might have some regrets knowing that his character flaws are so flawless. Our patient has some less open secrets though that we need to unearth and I have a theory. You see, we know that she was house sitting for a cleaning job and she got very scared from small noises. We also know that she has had broken ribs of unclear origin and she keeps lying about where she's been. What if she's doing what she has to do to pay the bills and doing home visits as a slightly more involved massage therapist. She then was assaulted while on the job, which led to the rib fractures shrouded in mystery and ongoing trauma and fear. If she is a sex worker, that would put her at risk of multiple conditions that could cause worsening nausea and vomiting and potentially the scar on the liver. Maybe the liver scar is from an old fetus that started growing outside the womb. Could that have been the twin of one that's growing inside her bowels, which she isn't aware of? Or maybe she has HIV and a rare gut infection like cryptosporidium from it. Even crazier is if this is a relic of her past, then if she had an abdominal pregnancy, which didn't make it, then the body can essentially calcify it causing something known as a lithopedium pregnancy. It's grim, but could very much present in this way. All right, I'm going for lithopedium pregnancy as my first diagnostic guess. Let's get more clues. I called UMass. There's no record of any surgery for Margaret. She's got no credit history until three years ago. She stole someone's identity. Superventricular tachycardia, 150 BPM. You get the pacemaker, we can overdrive her. Dorothy Deer. Great for a 65 year old. Five years ago, I was married and he would hit me, fed pesticides to my dog. I bought a dead woman's identity. She said he used pesticides, he could have stuck some in her dinner. Treat with prelidoxine. You think she's hot? You want to sleep with her? A middling grades, middling med school. You saw what you wanted to see. I gotta get out of here. You're a masseuse, a bit slutty. She is a hooker. She's not slutty, she's doing something wrong. But you really think that I would be okay with you getting a massage from a hooker you used to have sex with? I won't see you until you stop seeing her. Come on, go home. You can't recram all of med school right now. I'm feeling a lot of pressure here. The patient's husband just got admitted to the ER. House paying sex worker prices to get a massage is like signing up to a health center with a sauna, swimming pool, and jacuzzi so you can use the exercise bike. Not his usual efficiency unless he's keeping the spa features just in case. We all know he has his doubts about him and Cuddy's compatibility and cutting off his old, all too familiar connections is another step deeper 
into the unknown. Definitely something that would crank his heart rate up, but not as high as the patient's at 150. That is a classical heart rate, but why? Because of something called atrial flutter. That's when the upper side of the heart starts to beat frantically at 300 beats per minute, but the conducted beats only go down to the bottom of the heart at a certain ratio at two to one block that means only half make it through, so the heart rate is 150. At three to one block, it's 100. Four to one block, 75. I think you get the point. But what could be causing that? We now know what she says, which is the ex-husband was abusing her, and the team thinks she had pesticide poisoning. The abuse story fits, as I did think she sustained trauma, but poisoning doesn't really fit the timeline. She had three days of nausea and vomiting, and then her heart got worse. The heart would have gotten bad at the start and then slowly improved, if anything. The gradual onset of these symptoms, in my opinion, still fits really well with pregnancy on a background of trauma. They haven't mentioned if those tests were negative as well, but quite literally any woman of childbearing age gets a pregnancy test in healthcare settings. That's why I think a more atypical pregnancy type could work here, but there are some other possibilities like metabolic could be adrenal crisis, possibly due to previous tuberculosis. Degenerative could be a type of gastroparesis with degeneration of the rest and digest nerves of the gut and heart. To be fair, myasthenia gravis as an autoimmune condition could do that as well, as it would take out part of the rest and digest nervous system. Oh, that would work quite well. Neoplastic could be a carcinoid tumour which is spitting out serotonin from the bowel. Infectious could be current actual tuberculosis that could present like this. Toxic could be some kind of nerve gas exposure but more likely plants of the nightshade family could do it as well causing something quite spicy known as glycoalkaloid poisoning. That would fit really well here. Ah oh, the nightshade poisoning and myasthenia gravis are moving up in the differential, but let's see which one I can pull the trigger on after some clues. What happened to you? Look, there's a guy named Carl in Brooklyn. He said he didn't know what I was talking about. And he's just some guy that Margaret, some guy that Jenny used to work with. Pyrexia, 103 and rising. She wasn't poisoned. Theory 2.0 of why Chase hired you. Dr. Kelly, meet your doppelganger. They do actually look alike. I know what you're thinking. Jace wants to sleep with his mom. But who wouldn't hit that? What about Legionnaires? Tab said he saw a rattly old air conditioner. Dehydration from the fever could hide the pneumonia. You know, water the patient, treat for Legionnaires. Whose idea was Legionnaires? Dr. Chase's. We hire someone unqualified. It's just dead weight we'll all be pulling. Me especially. You especially why? I am at a different level. Which is reflected in what? Exactly. I am Felipe. Dr. House was worried how you left things. He's giving you massage. I have great fingers. How long have you been a masseur? Are you a prostitute? Or do you a cop? Get your hands off me. Maybe I should just quit. But I'm not like you guys. I gotta talk to her about this Trenton thing. It'll go bad. A massage from a male hooker? You're trying to sabotage this relationship. Why would I do that? Basically, having introduced me to your daughter. I'm not the only one who's holding back. You're going to burn. And I thought I was hallucinating when realizing someone came up with the plot idea that the new teammate was hired because she looks like Chase's mum. Who comes up with that? It does feel like she might be cut from a different cloth from the rest of the team, and I suspect that cloth may be sent to the patchwork pile very soon. Foreman also thinks that he can pull rank on Chase even after House's return, which doesn't quite add up considering that Chase has gotten way more diagnoses right than Foreman has. The new team member may have a saving grace though, as she is technically a psychiatrist and crawling ants and burning faces are right up her street. If that street contained an actual diagnosis though, what would it look like? Since my mini epiphany of glycoalkaloid poisoning in myasthenia, she has popped a fever and hallucinated, which does make one of these almost impossible. Do you know which one? Yeah, myasthenia would not do this. Glycoalkaloid poisoning still could though. What even is it though? Well the nightshade plant has been used for centuries with some women during the renaissance even using juice from the berries to dilate their eyes and look more attractive. They've also been used as an anesthetic although usually with the ever so slight helping hand of opium. What's deceptively interesting is that despite being one of the most toxic plants known to man, the fruit itself is attractively sweet and looks like a cherry, but is black all over. I can't imagine how this fits into the storyline, but the symptoms do work just so perfectly. I'm gonna go for nightshade, also known as belladonna poisoning, as my second diagnostic guess. 
Let's see if I'm on the right lines. It's hit her brain, whatever it is. Opacity in the left temporal lobe. Her delusions are consistent with mental illness. So her mind just happens to fall apart right after her body. Get someone to cut into her head, give me a biopsy. Oh, just say, hold on next time. Her temperature's normal. Tell House one of the patient's symptoms just disappeared. When did she last puke? Not since she was admitted. Two down. Shooting for three. No tachycardia. Maybe it is a bipolar disorder. You got the cause and effect backwards. Start her on haloperidol and lorazepam. The table, it's on fire. I think I'd be able to do this without screaming for my mommy. Your wife has a secret. She's sick. I'm schizophrenic. So I made a mistake. She's not ready for the team. But she got me the right answer, which none of the rest of you did. You really looked out for me. You want to get dinner tomorrow night? House has gotten a taste of his new life as Cuddy's little human tastes sweet, sweet mahogany. Probably one of the only people who can get under House's skin is operating at a level he can't predict. The uncivilized, unsocietally indoctrinated, blank slate little humans that we call children. Oh, I am looking forward to this rivalry even more than his showdown with Vogler. Schizophrenia though, really? We are giving actual common diagnoses in house now. I'm at nightshade poisoning and lithopedia and pregnancies and the author is on schizophrenia. Fair enough. But I mean, what happened to House's patients having gone through the whole diagnostic teams before landing on his lap? Is that not a thing anymore? How did schizophrenia slip through the cracks? Interesting still with the whole mistaken identity situation and power play between Chase and Foreman. 7.5 out of 10 entertainment, 7 out of 10 accuracy, 6.1 out of 10 diagnosis. This episode makes way more sense when you watch the previous one where a lonely writer has skeletons in the closet here.